Welcome, Mr. Ma. Are you hunting for the next Alibaba in Africa? No, I want. Uh, it's not uh, hunting. I'm just uh, trying to support and uh, help um, the mass, the big amount of the young people and entrepreneurs in Africa. Because I'm, I was moved and touched and inspired by these young people. Past a few years, every year I come here, I spend time with those young entrepreneurs. Their inspirations, their passion, and their you know mission want to change Africa, improve Africa. That reminds me, twenty years of me. And you said that they're in, they're inspiration to you. But to many, you're also an inspiration, and when they see you, I think they also imagine the levels of success that Alibaba has reached. When you look at the size of the African market, combined, when you combine all the countries, it's about the same as the Chinese market. But how do you see them overcoming the balkanization of Africa? Just the fact that there's different regulation, different languages. How do you see them overcoming that to reach similar levels of success? Yeah, I think um, Africa is a big market. The only thing is there are too many, uh, you know, countries that have different rules and languages and systems. But one thing for sure that uh, it's the entrepreneurs that can connect Africa. Sometimes it's very difficult for government politicians to sit down together, agree on something. But business people. Young entrepreneurs, they will find a solution to connect Africa. For example, we discuss about the payment. We discuss about logistic. Probably government can discuss a lot, but they don't know how to do it. Entrepreneurs know how to do it, and this is what I think. Twenty years later, Africa will be changed because of those young business leaders. There will be difficulties. There are problems in Africa. Just like there are problems anywhere in the world, but because of those problems, there is entrepreneurship. Those people want to change. Those people want to create. Those people want to build something. So this is what I think Africa has huge potential. One um, one thing that governments have done in Africa is that they are trying to. Create one market through the Africa Tree,、uh, Free Trade Agreement, which is meant to take off in 2020. What's your view on that initiative? I think it's great for the whole continent of free trade agreement. But the thing is, sometimes it's easy to reach an agreement, but it's difficult to implement. And who are the people to implement? It's not only need policies, not only need government efforts. You need to have people go on the market, right? To buy things, to sell things, to deliver things. So, I think the continent like Africa, there are two gr- two groups of people that will really implement and make the free trade agreement workable. One is entrepreneurs group, a group of entrepreneurs. They go across board. They cross all the things, the difficulties, and the other is those governments really believing free trade will help. So when they work into private sectors and public sectors, should be working together. And if you were in your twenties or thirties again, and somewhere in Africa, living somewhere in Africa, what sectors would you be interested in、um, doing business in? Oh, I think Africa. There are a lot of opportunities. We, I know, there are a lot of doing on the payment, a lot of doing logistic, a lot of doing e-commerce.、Um, I think if I go back twenty, thirty years ago, I would do the same thing like e-commerce, do the same on payment, on logistic, because it's just like a virgin land. It just started. People need it. Twenty years ago, when we started to do that, people don't need it. We are creating something people don't like it, and people don't trust. Today, people like e-commerce. People trust e-commerce. The only thing is that you have to build it up. But don't dream that you will be successful within one year. Nothing will be. 
You have to prepare for ten years, at least. Then you have chance. And in Africa, <clears throat> I don't think there is a magic that Africa will be changed within one year, two years. Let's prepare ten years, twenty years. And at one point in China, you had a TV show for entrepreneurs. Are you thinking about doing that for Africa? Yes, I try to do it. This is why one of the uh, uh, main reasons I come this year. I want to talk. I want to listen. And this is the first year we test that, because my TV show on supporting entrepreneurs in China was so successful. Millions of young people start to do start up entrepreneurs. And they, you have to inspire them to do it, and teach them how to do it. So I wish I could do that. So this year is the first year. I hope that we'll get more experience next few years. This program will be popular in Africa. We can help many young people. We can help a lot of startups. We can help entrepreneurs make them the heroes of the continent. And、uh, moving to a slightly different topic, you've said in the past that the trade war between U.S. and China could last 20 years. Do you still hold that view? Well, if we do not handle candle carefully, I mean, not the trade war might be. I say U.S.A. and China relationship might be in you know in in, in some turbulence in 20 years. Next 20 years may last. We have to be very, very careful. I think it's so important for China and the USA, two great countries, to working together, the to supporting economy, keep people prosperity, share a lot of technology together, and、uh, for so many years, China, US have been working together. There's a problem. That's very natural. If there's no problem, that's not natural, right? So when the problems, we have to solve the problems. We should not create more problems. And you've said that you love Africa, and、um, you've been, you've acted a bit as a bridge between China and Africa. What do you see as the main thing that China can gain from Africa, and vice versa, the main thing that Africa can gain from China? Well.、Um, I love Africa since three years ago, my first trip. I read a lot of things about Africa. I thought I knew, but I came here and said, "No, this is not." And I'm inspired by the people, young people, so many young people, and I inspired the the origin of the cultures.、Um, I decide that I come every year, at least to three, four countries, and I fit. I try to visit every country in ten years. And、uh, I would not say that、uh, how China can help Africa or how Africa can benefit from China, but I come as a global citizen, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur been working in the world for twenty years. I think a lot of our experience, our ideas, our know-how could enable and help. African young people, and meanwhile, these years I start to think, how can China help in a in a more efficient way? China putting a lot of efforts in Africa. When I was very young, I heard a lot of doctors in my hometown. They have to go to Africa for a year to help. But I think today, China and Africa, there are a lot of things similarity. Africa can learn a lot from F- from China on how China developed in the past twenty years in such a quick way, how we lift the poverty out of that. And I think the most important thing is not to rely on China, or Europe, or U.S. It's most of it's rely the people of this continent to these young people if they have the vision, if they have the know-how, if they. Want to change? That is the main driver, and this is what I feel. Things, these kind of spirit, this kind of things, exist in 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 Africa. People like us, our job is come here to discover, to support, empower. Okay, 
And if you had to pin it down to one thing that China can, can uh, or that Africa can learn, you said that there's a lot to learn. What, what would be one lesson that we can take from the Chinese example in lifting its people out of poverty, for instance? I think first, the people should have the real vision, a real belief that through economic reform, through marketing reform, market economy, through making people rich, is the way. And you've also stressed the power of technology to unlock growth in Africa. What, uh, what can technology do? And also, what are its limitations? What can it not do? Well, technology can enable every individual. Because in the early days, technology belongs to the rich people, big companies. But today, because of mobile phone, everybody can reach very cost effectively of all the know-how and technology, communicate and start to reach the market simpler and easier. I think internet, the difference between IT and internet, the IT is enrich powerful people, big companies more, is to enrich yourself. Internet is inclusive from the bottom to the top. There's nothing in the century that within such a short time, billions of people started using internet as a technology. So it's powerful. Technology, if you embrace it, if young people really want to try it, it will help you. But of course, the most important is people yourself. If you don't want to change, if you don't want to create a future, nobody can help you. And still on tech, um, I'd like to know, uh, is there a plan, is there still a plan to list and financial? Someday will, but don't, we are not in a hurry. We don't have a, a plan for that yet in the short term because, you know, at financing, first, we are very profitable. We grow very healthy. And I think we have a lot of things we want to do uh, in the in in the in the, in, in these years to making sure that we have enough investment for the future. And if you did list, you know what exchange you would be looking at. We we just like I say, we are not thinking about when to marry, so we will not think about where to marry yet.